Navies like their ships to be as similar as possible for good reason. It's easier to train sailors on similar ships and systems. It's cheaper to build many ships of the same design in bulk, and they're cheaper to operate and maintain. Late last year, when the U.S. Navy decided to base its next generation of amphibious warship design, the LXR, on an existing hull, it cited cost savings in design, maintenance and manpower as justification. But occasionally, the mission demands something special, something unique. Throughout history, while it developed classes of similar hulls for the bulk of its work, the Navy created several specialized platforms to test experimental capabilities or build one-offs for a unique requirement. The following list features some singular ships of the service, a ship that could silently lob dynamite with pressurized air, a test bed to bring aircraft stealth to the waves, and a barge with a single mission of supplying World War II sailors with thousands of gallons of ice cream. The wackiest spy ship in the Army. At the time when behemoth steel U.S. aircraft carriers and battleships dueled with the Imperial Japanese Army, the twin-masted scow schooner USS Echo logged 40,000 nautical miles while conducting reconnaissance and delivering supplies throughout the Pacific between 1942 and 1944. Loaned to the U.S. by New Zealand, the wooden-hulled Echo was valued for its ability to evade radar and blend in with civilian vessels while observing Japanese movements. The ship's exploits and the unusual arrangement of being commanded by a Navy officer at sea and an Army officer in port served as inspiration for the movie and TV series The Wackiest Ship in the Army. Echo was returned to New Zealand towards the end of the war and by the 1990s had fallen into such neglect that it was on the verge of being sold for firewood when it was bought and turned into a bar and museum. The Smallest Aircraft Carrier The stumpy 113-foot, 160-ton bylander IX-514, while in Navy service, was billed as the world's smallest aircraft carrier. With a flight deck the size of an Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate, the Bylander served as a helicopter training platform for the Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, and National Guard. Since it began service as a helicopter trainer in 1986, it has completed 120,000 error-free helicopter landings, with the record being 346 landings in one day on June 10, 1988 read a release on the ship. Commissioned in 1968, the ship saw service in the Vietnam War and was transferred to Florida for its later training role. While decommissioning, the ship is still in use with new civilian owners. The Navy's Attack Hydrofoils While many of the Navy's unique ships were one-off experimental efforts, the service ordered six Pegasus-class hydrofoils in the 1970s. The effort to buy the 260-ton hydrofoils, comparatively small by Navy ship standards, was kicked off by then Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Elmo Zumwalt, to beef up the Navy's numbers of surface combatants. Armed with eight RGM-84 Harpoon anti-surface missiles and a 76-millimeter deck gun, the Pegasus class were designed to be quickly deployed to interdict surface threats. Riding on the foils, a Pegasus could travel at 48 knots, or about 55 miles per hour. The ships were built by aircraft manufacturer Boeing and were planned for sale to allied countries. However, international interest in the program waned when the U.S. Navy halted the program in favor of heavier ships. The Navy based the class in Key West and decommissioned the ships in 1993. RV Flip The floating instrument platform was developed in the early 1960s as a stable platform for open ocean research for the Office of Naval Research, ONR. The 355-foot flip 
is towed to its research location horizontally, and once in place, it takes on 700 tons of seawater and goes vertical in a 20-minute process. Once its bow is in the air, almost a football field worth of flip is underwater, creating a more stable platform than most other research ships. The platform is designed to work in both vertical and horizontal configurations. Most rooms on the flips have two doors, one to use when the flip is horizontal and one to use when the flip is vertical. Things like bunk beds, toilets, and stoves are built on swivels and gimbals, so they will turn along with the flip, according to ONR. Other things that would not rotate so well, like sinks, are built both horizontally and vertically in each room. The platform, still in service, is manned by five crew and can support 11 researchers and has an endurance of about a month. Lockheed Martin's stealth ship. The Sea Shadow IX-529 was an experimental ship built by Lockheed Martin in the 1980s to test the stealth technology used on the F-117 Nighthawk for possible use on submarines. In the early 1980s, the vessel was built modularly under tight secrecy by different manufacturers and assembled inside the Hughes Mining Barge, HMB, at Redwood City, California, according to a 2003 Navy news release. There, the HMB would be moved out to sea in the dead of night and halfway submerged to let the sea shadow out to be tested without being overly exposed to public observation. The Hughes Mining Barge was developed in tandem with the ship's Golmar Explorer as part of Project Azorian. The sharp angles of the sea shadow made the ship appear smaller on radar and informed not only on the design of the deck house of the Arleigh Burke destroyer, but the ship of the antagonist in the 1997 James Bond film, Tomorrow Never Dies. The ship was based in San Diego, California for years before the ship was sold for scrap in 2012. While not the most famous deep diving submersible, NR-1 could be the most interesting. Entering service in 1969, Nerwin may be the world's smallest nuclear-powered submarine. Manned by a crew of two officers, five nuclear-trained enlisted sailors, and two researchers, the 400-ton boat was built to stay underwater in depths of excess of 2,000 feet and could rest on the seafloor for extended periods of time for both research and military missions. Following the loss of the Space Shuttle Challenger in 1986, the NR-1 was used to search for, identify, and recover critical parts of the Challenger craft, according to an archived version of the U.S. Navy's fact file. The boat, built by General Dynamics Electronic Boat, was decommissioned in 2008. Lake Michigan's Aircraft Carrier As an inland, side-wheel paddle aircraft carrier, the USS Wolverine might fit better in a steampunk fiction. The ship had been the world's largest passenger side-wheel steamer when it was built as the C&B in 1912. It was acquired by the US Navy in 1942 and converted into an aircraft carrier to train pilots. Operating a thousand miles away from the ocean on Lake Michigan, Wolverine provided a much needed platform for pilots to practice their takeoffs and landings. Unfortunately, rookie pilots having to contend with the lack of wind of Lake Michigan and the failure of the ship's paddle wheel to generate optimum speeds resulted in the bottom of the lake being littered in Corsairs and Wildcats. To this day, 60 aircraft are still believed to be in the water. The Wolverine and its sister training carrier, USS Sable, were decommissioned within months of the war's end and eventually scrapped. The Naval Academy Break Unlike students at other colleges, unruly midshipmen in the U.S. Navy Academy were never put on probation. Instead, they were forced to live on a prison ship. That ship was USS Reina Mercedes, which had been captured in Cuba by the U.S. Navy during the Spanish-American War. 
The prize was initially sent to Boston as a receiving ship for new recruits while waiting for their first assignments. It was then transferred to Annapolis in 1912, where it served several functions, including barracks for midshipmen who had committed various infractions. Although the ship was often referred to as a floating break, rogue midshipmen ordered to live on the boat as punishment were not actually considered prisoners. The ship was really just a detention hall where misbehaving midshipmen had to return after completing their classes and drills. The practice ended in 1940, and the ship was used primarily as quarters for the Academy's personnel until it was sold for scrap in 1957. The Dynamite Cruiser. Commissioned in 1890, the USS Vesuvius was the first and only US ship to be outfitted with dynamite guns. Vesuvius's three pneumatic guns could fire 550 pound high explosive shells at targets up to a mile away and were used during the Spanish-American War in 1898 to bombard enemy emplacements in Cuba. Since the guns quietly propelled shells with compressed air, it was reported that the enemy became unnerved because of their inability to hear any boom preceding incoming fire. Their success as a terror weapon aside, dynamite guns quickly fell out of favor due to their lack of accuracy and high maintenance needs. Vesuvius's dynamite guns were removed and replaced with torpedo tubes. The ship later suffered the indignity of almost sinking itself when one of its torpedoes circled back and slammed into the hull. We hope you liked the video and we want to know which one was your favorite. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the bell down below if you want to make sure you never miss out on any important new information like this.